Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make a quick selection and refined cutout all in Adobe Photoshop. Welcome back, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. So quick selections, refined cutouts in Photoshop, let's just jump into it. Rightio, we're now in Photoshop and we've opened up our image. You can see it's a subject against a clean white background, but you can do this with more complex backgrounds as well. And for this tutorial, we're going to be using the quick selection tool to make a really quick selection and then refine that selection a little bit later on. So let's grab the quick selection tool from the toolbar on the left underneath the magic wand tool. And you can select a brush size or you can adjust the brush size using the left and right square brackets on your keyboard and then just left click and drag over the background to make that selection. If your background is more complicated, it may actually be easier to do the opposite and select your subject instead. So I'm just going to zoom in now and adjust that brush size as necessary and zoom in as necessary just to make a selection of the entire background. So you can see here, I probably need to increase that brush size just so it captures more of the selection. And we've got this last little bit here. Let's just bring this down nice and small. Just try and get as much in as I can. And if you do select too much by mistake like this, just simply hold down the Alt key and left click and it will remove that from the selection. So there we go, we've really quickly made a selection of the background and from the layers panel now we can add a layer mask and of course that is the opposite way around but with the mask selected we can go to image adjustments and invert and it will flip it around the right way for us and we can double click on this layer and call it subject. And from the bottom of the layers panel, if we click the adjustments icon, we can add a solid color. This is going to work as our background. Now you can pick any color that you like. I'm going to use black for this tutorial and click OK. And just drag this underneath. And I'm going to double click on the text and call this background and then select this icon here. So, so it locks it in place so I don't move it by mistake. So you can see the quick selection tool has done a pretty good job at making that selection. We do have these white lines around the edge that's called fringing and we've got a lot of jagged edges as well. So we need to fix that and we can do that very quickly and easily. So if we select the mask on our subject layer and go to select and select a mask. If you're on an older version of Photoshop this might be called refine edges and it brings up a panel that looks like this. Now what we're going to do is look at some of the global refinements. So we can actually smooth the edge here, so watch this jagged area if I adjust the slider. You can see it becomes a lot more smooth. Now we don't want to go too far, um, <laughs> we want something really subtle. So let's go for around 4 I think. It just smooths out all of those jagged edges around the entire selection. You can add a feather if you want to, to soften that. The only thing to be careful with it, with this is it will uh, increase that around all edges. So we're trying to remove any kind of light edges around the edge, not add more. So I think I'll, I think I'll leave that very, very, very low. We'll go for something like 0.4, I think. And the contrast, we can bring that up as well. But of course, if we bring that too high, it then brings back the jagged edges. So. As with a lot of these, I think when you open up your specific image, it depends on image size as well. It's just a case of adjusting these sliders and finding a balance that gives you a nice smooth cutout with a little bit of natural blur so it's not too clean and too perfect, but then removes those fringes around the edge. And you can of course adjust the shift edge as well. If you increase this, it will uh, expand on your selection or you can decrease it and it will cut into your selection. Now we don't want to cut in too much because that will start to remove details around the face and parts of the ear. But if we go for let's say minus 30%, we can then show the original image and then some of the changes we've made. So I think that's a, a pretty good improvement. And click OK and it will add those changes to your mask. Now anything that isn't 
captured, you can either go ahead and select using the selection tool again, or you can just use the brush tool with black as your foreground color and select the mask and just brush brush out that there so we can see a few little bits here so the selector mask is great if you want to just kind of apply it to the entire image and gives you a great head start and then of course usually it's just a case of going in and just looking for areas where it didn't quite cut it out as cleanly as you'd like and just refining that manually now I'm doing this quite quickly but I would always encourage everyone to spend a bit longer and just kind of just give your image a little bit of love because the end result will look much better for it so the brush tool is quite useful for some of these corners you can see here now if I've got these lines so there's large areas that have some sort of highlight or a line or fringing around the edge what we can actually do is we can use this smudge tool and that's underneath the blur tool and again we can select a nice soft feathered brush now when I think smudge tool uh, I genuinely think something like this which is which is hilarious but not quite what we want so if we select the mask specifically and then use the smudge tool with that soft feathered brush we can actually smudge the mask so I'm just left clicking and moving towards the subject's arm and you can see it's actually pushing that mask in and you'll see it really effectively here as I left click and move towards the subject's body I'm just smudging that mask in even though you can't see the edge of the mask I'm not actually distorting the subject just pushing that mask in a little bit so think of it as a, a manual way of refining that edge and of course you can spend much more time doing this as well so those are a few different techniques that you can use something else we can do to darken these highlights around the hair is if we go to the adjustment icon at the bottom and select curves we can then drag this down so it darkens it darkens the whole image of course we can select the mask and go to image adjustments invert and it will flip this round effectively rendering it invisible but of course as with all masks it's white to add to the mask black to remove from the mask we can use the brush tool with white as our foreground color and we can paint into that mask and what this will do is it will show through that curves adjustment only where I'm brushing so you can see on the mask here I'm just brushing in around the edge and it's allowing that curves adjustment layer that darkened our image only to show around the edge of the hair so if I turn this off that's how it looked before and I can turn it back on and it looks something like that so there we go we've made a really quick selection we've refined it using select a mask we've then used the brush tool just for any small corners and we've then used the smudge technique to actually smudge the mask and using all of these techniques together you can use this on a subject with a clean background or something with a more complex background it just might take a little bit more time just to get that really high-end finish and there we go there's a look at selections and refinements brushes masks and smudgings all manner of creative stuff guys i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below i hope you had a fantastic christmas and new year it's great to be back take care and i'll see you next time